G'day boys and girls. Today we start with a new topic, partnerships. In the form of ownership, you have already dealt with the sole trader, so we're going to start off with a partnership. The definition of a partnership, a partnership is an agreement between two or more persons not exceeding 20 in a commercial or professional undertaking. Commercial means we are buying and selling. Professional usually renders a service whereby they combine assets and skills with the aim of earning a profit and then to sharing the profit or losses in a predetermined ratio. Partnership agreement. Now, a partnership can be formed verbally, but it's not advisable. A partnership agreement. A legal document is advisable. It's set up by an attorney. In drawing up the partnership agreement, it is necessary to consider the role that each partner will fill. There are also different types of partners. The general partner is known to the public as being a partner in the business and usually takes an active role. He's actually working at the business. And then an anonymous sleeping or silent partner is not known to the public and does not take an active role in the business. He's not working there. He usually just provides capital. We're going to throughout learning the new accounts, compare the sole trader with a partnership. So looking at a sole trader, the owner will have provided capital in order to start the business. If the business then makes losses and becomes insolvent, the owner will need to use his personal funds in order to settle the debts of the business. If the owner does not have sufficient ready cash of his own, then he will need to sell some of his personal possessions in order to pay the creditors of the business. A partnership. The partners will have to provide capital in order to start the business. The business might make losses or experience cash shortfalls in future. The parties will need to use their personal funds to settle the debts of the business. The liability of the partners to settle the additional debts of the partnership is not limited to the amounts of money they have already provided, as in capital. <coughs> and this is where we get to the concept of unlimited liability. The liability of the owner is not limited to the amount of capital he has already provided. If there's any losses or cash shortfall, he will have to settle it with his own personal money or assets. Ethical considerations relating to partnerships. There will need to be a trusting relationship between each partner if the business is to be a success. Each partner has the power to enter into contracts on behalf of the partnership, and this will have financial implications for the partnership and therefore for each partner. So whatever each partner do have an influence of the, uh, on the partnership and therefore on all partners involved. They are jointly and severely liable for the debts of the business. If you entered into a contract that causes losses for the partnership, it's not only he that will lose money, but other partners as well. Access to the books and auditing. Because each partner has a financial investment in the business, access to the books should be allowed to all partners at all times. At least one of the partners will oversee the finances of the partnership. He will make sure that financial statements are prepared and the, they, he will take care of the calculation and the division of profits or losses. Now, even though one partner might be responsible for the accounting records, each partner has the responsibility to ensure that good internal control exists in the business. Each partner must be aware that the lack of control impacts on the performance of the business. This means that the amounts earned by him and his co-partners will consequently be affected as well. The following is important when it comes to internal control. So 
safeguarding of all assets, making sure that all expenses are valid business expenses and that the business are not paying for a partner's expenses. A business income, all business income is brought into account. The sum of the income does not find its way directly into a pocket of a partner. All income must go be recorded in the business. Disagreements over lack of internal control are often a reason why some partnerships fail. To minimize this, the partners might agree to an internal audit or an external audit. An audit is the process whereby an independent person checks the internal control procedures, documents, journals, ledgers, trial balances, and financial statements. And this person will then issue a report which will indicate his opinion on whether the figures represented in the financial statements can be relied upon or not. An external audit is when an independent audit firm is contracted to conduct, conduct the audit. An internal audit is done by a person that is employed by the business to conduct the checks on an ongoing basis. Now let's start looking at the bookkeeping procedures that is specifically relating to partnerships. Most of the daily or monthly transactions of a partnership are identical to those of a sole proprietorship. The difference will be in the owner's equity accounts. Again, we will first look at a sole trader and then at a partnership so that you can see the differences. So in a sole trader, a cap will have a capital account with a credit balance, and these will reflect the funds that is provided by the owner. Drawings account will have a debit balance, and it will reflect the amount that is withdrawn or already taken by the owner. At the accounting year end, any net income, that is the profit, is then transferred from the profit and loss account to the credit side of the capital account. The balance of the drawings account is then transferred to the debit side of the capital account. This is part of the closing transfers that you have learned about in grade 10. The balance on the capital account changes depending on the level of profits and drawings. If income is retained, that means there's more uh, uh, income in the business, uh, the net profit is more than the drawings, the capital balance will increase. If the drawings is more than the net income, the profit that was earned, the capital balance will decrease. Okay, so this is how a capital account in the sole trader business will look like. It will have a credit balance. It reflects the funds that was provided by the owner. And then the drawings account, this is an example on how it will look like, is represents all money that is already taken by the owner. Remember? Capital belongs to the owner. Drawings is what he has already taken. So at the end of the financial year, as part of the closing transfer, the drawings account needs to be transferred to the debit side of the capital account. So drawings will be credited with the total amount of drawings and capital will be debited. At this point, the capital account will show but still belongs to the owner after everything that the owner has taken. The balance on the capital account will change depending on the level of profits and drawings. So let's look at it as an example. From the profit and loss account, we can see here the incomes was 90, the expenses was 80, incomes were more than the expenses by 10,000, so the business has made a profit of 10,000. So the profit and loss account will be debited with capital and the capital account will be credited with the profit. If we now balance this account, we will now see that it has a balance of 54,000. It has increased from 50,000 to 54,000, meaning by 4,000. What has contributed to that? If we look at the profit, 10,000 minus the drawing, 6,000 is 4,000. Since the income, the profit, was more than the drawings by 4,000, the capital balance has increased by 4,000. With partnerships, 
Now, the capital that is provided by the partners will be stipulated in the partnership agreement. The profit sharing ratio will then depend on the amount of capital contributed. So the, the ratio of the profit will be calculated based on the amount of capital that is provided by each partner. And they are not allowed to change the capital contributions at all. They cannot just increase or decrease it during the year. It needs to stay the same as it is stipulated in the partnership agreement. Then that means that each, each partner will have his own capital account. Capital accounts must stay the same as in the partnership agreement. If they want to change it, the partnership agreement must be redrafted, done by an attorney, and it costs money. Therefore, we will have current accounts. Since we cannot close and transfer the profit and the drawings to the capital accounts, they need to stay the same. We will now have new accounts, current accounts. A current account for each partner is created to close up the net profit and the drawings at the end of the financial period. Drawings. The partnership agreement will usually stipulate the amount and frequency of drawings by the partners. It will not be fair on other partners if one partner withdraws substantial amounts during the year, which could cause liquidity or cash problems for the business. It is necessary to maintain separate drawings account for each partner. It needs to show what each partner has withdrew during the year. At the end of the accounting period, the drawings account will be closed off to the current account of each partner. So if we have two partners, uh, there will be a capital account for each one. For example, it will be capital account with the partner's name B. Swat, capital account partner's name C. White. Two separate capital accounts. And that will reflect the funds that has already been provided by the partner, and it should be the same as stipulated in the partnership agreement. Then each partner will have a current account, so current account B SWAT and current account C White. And these will be used to close off the net income and the drawings at the end of the financial period. Each partner will also have a drawings account, for example, drawings C white, which will indicate all money taken by the partner during the year. <coughs> now, at the end of the accounting period, the drawings account will be closed off to the current account of the partners, just the same as in the sole trader, but not to the capital account, to the current account. So the drawings account of each partner will be credited with its current account and the current account of each partner will be debited. Now, it's very important to note here that the correct control account here is not drawings. It's drawings B SWAT. The partner's name must be indicated with the drawings account. If you only write drawings, you don't get the marks. The same apply in the account of drawings. It should be current account B SWAT and not just current account. If you do not write the partner's name, you do not get the mark.